So this is 150, 150 Hyman Street. Uh, yeah. Kitchener, um, not the best location, but it is up and coming. So we always put our signs up, like a Kohle living. And what that means is that it's just CA is Caitlin, CO is Courtney, oh. Elijah is ELI. So we said, hey, just do that. Then we, we then then number four came along. So yeah. uh, that's Kakoli uh, Asset Manager. She's the ass. <laughs> <I'm just joking. laughs> so her her name is Chloe. So she's number uh, number four. She's two years old. Um, but yeah, we'll always put her signs up. Make sure that uh, we have some um, some presence, some marketing, and whatnot. So people sort of see that it gets branded and whatnot. I'm not into marketing. I don't know too much about it, but. Uh, People say it's good, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's a nice clean look, though. Right? Yeah. yeah. People know they're getting into. Yeah, exactly. Professional. Yeah, company and whatnot. Um, so we bought this for. This is 36 units. Uh, this is what again. What I like to specialize is two to two to two and a half story walk ups. You can see that the lower levels there. Yeah. Um, the uh, the second and then the third. So that's a sub basement. Um, and these are the two units. 36 units. Bought it for 400 uh, 4.3 mil. Uh, and when we sold the back half to a developer, that developer, oh, he bought that house, so he yeah. fenced it up. So he's gonna actually build. That's gonna be his drive right. driveway, Makes going sense. right to the very back. Yeah. And he bought that whole parcel of land from us. What's the uh, the caveat of this is that um, he's gonna do some upgrades to our property as well. So he's gonna change the uh, the the driveway, uh, re get that repaved, redo the back part of the uh, of the of the lot now. Uh, for the garbage and the recycling things like that. So that's already um, been negotiated on in the contract And we always try to you know make it a win-win for, for for everyone And did you know that buying this property or did we did okay. we want to buy this and actually buy him out? <laughs> so but because this is a small piece of like it's a small piece of land, mm -hmm. right? Um, and it's just a small little bungalow. So we're thinking that hey, we can just buy them out But we're not developers. We're, yeah. we're just you know, yeah, this is simple. We know what we're getting into um, And this makes money at the get-go this makes money. So my one of my friends asked, what's your, what's your goal? And I actually said, I don't have a goal. Like, I don't have a number of units. That's what he meant. What's your yeah. goal about how many units? I, my, my wife may have that. I don't. Uh, mine, mine is basically, when I really thought about it, I was like, hey, what is my goal? My goal right now, because I haven't stabilized build, this building yet, is 36 units, and I'm trying to drive all the rents up to about $1,200 per unit. So 12 times 36 is whatever, 40 something thousand a month. That's mm -hmm. my gross. So this is a value add building. Yeah. So you saw uh, my student, my student housing, uh, that's basically student housing. Uh, get the uh, expenses down, uh, increase the NOI. This yeah. is a value add. So let's mm -hmm. uh, let's take a look at this building. And was this on the MLS or was this private? No, this is private. Okay. So most of our uh, most of our stuff is private. Yeah. And they, do you just have a lot of realtors and brokers that yeah. keep an eye out for you? That's or? right. Yeah. You have to close. Like you have to be able to uh, to close a building and make it work. Yeah. Um, and then people will, will trust you. So we're doing some renovations. You'll see a whole bunch of garbage there. Um, let's see if, come on over. So again, two and a half story walk-ups, no elevators. Uh, pitched roof is better than the, uh, because now I'm looking at shingled roof at $2.75 per square foot instead of the 10 or 12, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so something, something very, very easy to manage. Mm -hmm. This is already kind of minimized. So let's take a look at this one. Oh, yeah. This is again not stabilized yet. So this is this is this is an existing unit. Yeah. Um, pretty gross. What we do is normally uh, fix up the walls, paint it, redo the floors. Um, we're gonna do too much. That gets regutted. Change the uh, the toilet, the vanity. Either we reglaze uh, the tub, or we try to keep the uh, the tiles, or we get that changed. And this gets all redone. So tell me about your strategy here. Are you going to kind of keep your Renaults mildly low because of the nature of the area? Or are you going to reach up and try and pump the whole building up over time? So it depends on the building and the location. So sometimes you yeah. can't get that major lift. So yeah. what you try to do is that um, I normally put, I don't usually do a full gut like this, yeah. but normally I do a two-year payback period. What this means is that my, what I normally do is that my rent's are say $900 and sure. I can dump it up to 1200 that's a $300 increase, right? Times that by 24 months. So that's uh, 7200 So that's using my budget, 7200 
okay? Because I want to be able to recoup it fairly quickly. So I bought each unit for about 110,000. I'm gonna spend $7,000 into it. That's 117,000 per unit. Yeah. And I'm gonna be renting so it up. Yeah, 1,200 around. 12, yeah, 12 to about 1,300. On a lower unit like this, yeah, it's gonna be 1,200. For upper unit, it's gonna be an extra 50. Like if it's a two bedroom, uh, lower unit's 12. Upper unit, it's gonna be 1,250. So I'm in. This is a beast for 1,200, really. This is big. Is it, sorry? I, I find this. A Big? fairly large unit, yeah. twelve hundred. Yeah. And great um, windows, like yeah. everything's, everything's good. Yeah, the size is good. Everything else, uh, like from the uppers to the lowers, like they're all the same window window size. Yeah. But I will charge fifty dollars less for something lower. Yeah, right. Um, but this is this is how it doesn't only come this bad. Most of these units were actually uh, renovated before, so a good half of it was already done. Yeah. This is already kind of minimized. And so, are you guys dropping the ceiling here? Or what's no, it shouldn't be. So I'm not sure what they did before. Um, sometimes it's new, like, you're like, what the heck is this, right? Yeah. What did the previous owner do? Um, <laughs> but yeah, whatever, whatever this is, maybe they didn't want, I don't know. So I'm gonna talk to my contractor, make sure everything else, like it's not major. Yeah. That's, uh, no, it just seems strange. Like, it does seem strange. I guess, because like, I normally think that this is for an electrical chase or something, but it looks like they didn't even need it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. As, oh, sorry. <laughs> One of the other questions yeah. I think might be good for people to hear is like, are you using standardized materials throughout most of your yeah. buildings? Like, is it always the same paint color? It's always color? the same. It's always the same paint color. It's always the same uh, fixtures and whatnot. Um, I don't cheap out on the material. Because I'm already paying for the labor, right? Of course. So all these things will, um, the, the countertop, or not the countertop, but the, the sink, the faucets, things like that, I always put a, a nicer faucet on. I think that's something interesting, the way you phrase that, though. I haven't heard anyone say it that way. <laughs> I'm paying for the labor, no matter what, and labor essentially costs the same whether you go high end or low end. That, on, that's kind of that really interesting. Hit, that hit me too, because it's so true. Because typically your materials aren't what's costing you, right? It's it's just yeah. time to do all this work. Right. So. I just don't want to see faucets leaking or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to see, like if you get a good mold, American Standard, um, all the... Uh, um, the cartridges. The cartridges. Yeah. It, it's all free. Just go there, get a new one, yeah. get a change, right? Uh, and you always have to do your regular um, uh, your inspections. I do two times per year. So I go with my super and whatnot. I'll write it down, change everything, check the toilets, the flappers, check everything. Yeah. The and so do you guys have a checklist when you're going through? Well, not anymore. I have a checklist, but I've been doing it for so many times, so many yeah. years that it's, it's pretty standard. I mm -hmm. know what I'm looking for. Um, but if it's, let's say, the smoke alarms, We'll sometimes get the uh, the tenant to sign off on it. Or yeah. I get my super to sign off on it because I, I don't want I don't want to come back to me and say that you know what we didn't check out. Mm -hmm. So notices are posted and whatnot, and we get everything done properly. So, awesome. Yeah. Uh, again, something very very simple. I don't do major. Um, like some people can do something major and get that lift. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that because I want to get this rented ASAP. And my like I, I want to keep my contractors yeah. busy. Dan, I want to get keep him busy. He get, gets in, gets out, does my work, um, and then I can quickly get this, this, this rented. Mm -hmm. right? right. So this is this is something very very simple. So let's go and take a look. So this is a unit. This is actually comprised of six six plexes. Six six. Oh, okay. Jeez. So you haven't seen it like like a boiler room. And so you mentioned that it's condoized or been kind of yeah. So essentially, like, do you see that potentially as a long-term exit? <laughs> Where you would like actually sell it off? Yeah, or? more like a short term exit. Oh, okay. I want to quickly get this. Was supposed to be an in and out, but the cash flow is very strong. Right? So, this is a because it's a 6 6 plex, this is a boiler. Uh, this is this is small. This is an old hot water tank. We always buy it, don't rent it. Just go and buy it. It's it's cheap. Even the commercial ones are about 1500. This is a small boiler. I'm not sure how many BTUs, probably, I'm guessing. Maybe 200,000 BTUs or something. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure. I always get my mechanical contractors to uh, uh, to service it uh, before the startup. So mechanical contractor, you also do my boilers and whatnot. So here's the boiler, here's the expansion tank. Here's the uh, the exhaust. That's it, it's simple. Here's your meters. Yeah, um, so when you're going through a property and doing your due diligence, like looking at buying, are you bringing through an inspector? Do you know enough, do you bring a contractor? You always have to bring in your, your uh, your, your qualified people. So a building like this, it's not a residential, so I don't get building inspectors, home inspectors. So you're gonna get your PNG, 
a uh, structural engineer. So my friend, uh, who does buildings actually, he comes in and gets everything done for me. Um, obviously it's market, like he, mm -hmm. he has to get paid, he has to put bread on the table. So you need a PNG, I get my plumbers uh, to scope the lines, I get my electricians uh, to make sure the electrical is good. And then I get my roofers uh, to make to inspect the roof. Um, if it's a shingle roof, I still get him up there because uh, he gets all my work. Um, so he's a roofer, commercial, like he does flat, um, everything. Uh, who else do we get? And That's then it. roughly what does it cost you to like say inspect a property? Okay, so to inspect the lines, I'm looking at about 1200. Uh, my PNG, it's, that's probably your biggest budget. Um, I don't remember. Probably on a building like this, I'm guessing. Yeah. Because I, I don't have the figures again. Maybe five or 8,000, 5,000 maybe. Not that much, maybe 5,000. Then your electrician, which is per hour, and he's an older fella, he's uh, he's retired, so I pay him, uh, I think it's like 50 or $60 an hour, um, so he does that. Uh, my roofer, I don't actually pay him, he just inspects. Yeah, because right? he gets all the work. He gets so. all the work. Um, and my mechanical contractor, excuse me, so the me mechanical contractor comes in as well. So I use somebody local here um, that I've been using, I source them out, and he's good, he'll come and inspect everything, make sure everything else is good. So those are probably your good four or five people that you get individually. You don't get home inspectors. For a building, like a commercial building, you don't get a home inspector. Mm -hmm. And you, you, get the, you get the specialists involved. So you have your plumbers, electricians, your, uh, your PNG, um, and he gets you a, big, uh, a big book and make sure everything is, is good. Right. What does so, this process take? Pretty quick. Like, yeah. Again, my wife does all the analysis, so we, we split it up. Um, but when she tells me, okay, well, um, we're, we're firm on this, we have to do the inspections and whatnot. Um, this can literally take a week or two. Oh, so I'll get wow. my guys, yeah, I'll get my guys in oh, yeah. ASAP, um, get every, you know, everybody in place. And it's, it's only a one day thing. So bang, one day, we start at nine, we finish probably at 12, like 12 or two o'clock, or it doesn't take that long. But the inspection does, my, my PNG does. He'll probably spend a day uh, or day and a half because I want everything inspected. I feel like that's quick too though. But that's yeah. amazing, really. Well, he'll have three guys, right? Okay. So he'll have one lead, and then he'll have two helpers, right? So he, they're going in and out, in and out, out of all the units, everything's open. Um, and then, basically, yeah, he's doing all that, right? Yeah. And then, make sure you scope the lines as well. So that's something that you guys have to look at. Uh, these are your sewer lines, right? Yeah. Uh, all, your, all your lines, make sure everything else is good. There's no slope, there's no sagging in the lines. Um, there's no roots going, uh, growing into your lines or whatnot. And that can be something to negotiate, right? You go back and say, hey, um, you know what, I found out that these lines are sagging because I've actually dealt with that and you can have to break up floors and do we do like sewer lines, right? So I don't want to deal with it. Scope the lines out first. That's something easy that you can do and it literally costs you 1200 bucks, right? If something goes wrong, you say, hey, it's like, I knew about it. I already got a cash back on clothes. I already said, hey, do you get it fixed or whatnot? Yeah. So you can negotiate on that. That's something that you should do prior to uh, taking ownership. Yeah. That's so I'm just going to go, there's a laundry room here. So I just have to get the money. Um, and then the, why is this open? So I gotta get my super. I always have cameras here as well. Yeah. So and then, uh, so again, oh. this is not stabilized, right? Ooh, 50 cent raise over here. <laughs> What's going is on? It? <laughs> These are families. They're nicer machines. <laughs> um, so, so maybe talking just a bit further about the exit plan. So like, is it the, to sell off individual condos? Yeah. Is it to, yeah. So we're waiting for the builder next uh, next door. So he's building. Um, once he builds, it's gonna lift this whole area. So I'm not, I'm sort of bootstrapping right now. Like, I'm, what I mean is that I only renovate what I need to. Mm -hmm. And yeah. once I get um, sort of this whole area lifted because of him, mm -hmm. then I can actually, uh, start selling. Then I'm going to start putting the money in because if I put the money in now, it's just going to, it's, it's sort of sunk right now, right? It's locked in. Yeah, it's locked in. And I want to know what he's doing. Right? Yeah. I want to know, is he, is he, his, his color scheme, what he's, how it's looking for, uh, like in this area. And I'll, I'll, I actually want to match it. Like he's going to be at the top of the market. I want mm -hmm. to be below him. Yeah. I don't want to be um, the same, but just, just slightly lower, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, you don't want to tie up money and basically try to sell it before before he sells, right? Yeah. Again, these are just coin laundry. I just do this on a regular basis. Um, 
So then when you do eventually go to sell the condos, mm -hmm. do you see that being like, are you selling to families or investors or? These are probably going to be investors. So we bought this for a hundred and let's say a hundred ten thousand. Mm -hmm. um, and it rents for about 1200 for a two bedroom. Mm -hmm. And we're not sure where the market is going to be. So let's say if after he, like he sells his, mm -hmm. um, I might be able to, I don't know, sell at 175, 180. Yeah. I don't know. Right? So, yeah, that's about that's about it. Again, these are six six plexes, right? Together. Mm -hmm. Here's the laundry room. And then here's the uh, here's the mechanical room. Again, same thing, same, same layout. You have your hot water tank. It's tucked in there. Yep. Here's your boiler. Um, I don't know where the lights are. Is that the light? No, it's, <laughs> I check with my super, because these uh, CFLs are burnt out, I think. Yeah. Here's my boiler system. Here's my expansion tank, and here's the exhaust. Simple. Yeah. Right? Nothing, nothing complicated. Mm -hmm. Right? So multifamily is, is easy. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's it. Um, anything else? Uh, like, I know that there's a whole theme I'd like to talk to you. I don't know whether we do it here or the next one, but like uh, mm -hmm. talking through the financing process for yeah. larger properties, I, I know my audience would definitely enjoy it. Okay. So like talking through like even things like environmentals and the, the, like usually your due diligence period's a lot longer. And yeah, yeah. If you don't mind diving into that. I would love to. I can talk a little bit, but actually yeah. that's my wife. Like she oh, deals with all, okay. Yeah, so she deals with all that. So she does deals with all um, the environmental and whatnot. We'll get all that mm -hmm. sort of set set up. Like we already have our people there. Uh, the financing, uh, we actually go directly to the bank. Um, so we don't go through brokers or whatnot. We have a good relationship with the bank. Mm -hmm. uh, they've seen what we've done. They actually um, go into my background and see, hey, are you a property manager or whatnot? Yeah. They actually vetted me out first. Um, and so when you guys go like say make an offer on this property mm -hmm. like do you do a really long due diligence period or do you like put in we'll close 40 days after we waive conditions or how do you kind of or is it deal dependent deal dependent uh depends on um the location the building or whatnot but normally i th again this is a, this is my my wife deals with that i think it's about uh, I'd say 30 or 45 days. Mm -hmm. So it's something, it's something standard. Yeah. So we have to have our people in place. Um, yeah. We have to have like all those, what I mentioned, all those professionals yeah. in place to do their inspections and whatnot. Um, the environmental is always, always done as well. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah, no, that's Typically good. coming in like 30% down? No, it's usually 25% 25, 25 down. Um, so we usually have some investors. Um, yeah. This is a... They never have like a non-recourse loan. It's it's a recourse. Like we have, mm -hmm. um, I'm on title um, for for the loan. They're they're looking at my assets, so uh, I'm the covenant, and all of my assets are are, are open actually. Uh, yeah. Because in Canada, they, you, you don't have non-recourse loans, right? Like mm -hmm. in the states. Yeah. So I don't know if you're people in the states that that's amazing. Like you have these non-recourse loans, you can just get in without other assets being exposed. Here in Canada, no, they yeah. want. They want friggin' everything. And that is a much lower risk strategy, obviously, in the States, right? Yeah. You can take a lot higher risks yeah. without, yeah. So for, whenever you're doing multifamily here in Canada, you have to be you have to be very safe, right? So when you're doing the due diligence part of your, your analysis, like of these buildings, make sure that you, you don't miss a step, right? So. Awesome, awesome. perfect. Yeah. Okay, That's cool. Good. Yeah. Yeah, this, this building hasn't, it's not stabilized yet. So it's yeah. only been one year and we're just, there is turnover. So you'll see, there are some bad apples. I've been threatened here. <laughs>